hard to follow, but I am seeing the greatest generosity directed towards the church in my career. In the last six months, I've been part of securing $3 million plus gifts for congregations, but it isn't just the big headline grabbing gifts that are happening. In a congregation that told me they were behind in giving and had me analyze the patterns, this is what I discovered. One household grew from $60 a week in generosity to $94 a week. That's $1,700 a year. Another from $20 a week to $40 a week, essentially doubling theirs. And another from $100 a year to $1 a dollar a day, a 250% increase. By the way, this congregation that told me they were behind was actually on target to grow generosity by 10% this year. The reality, two families who give once a year out of their IRAs chose to delay the timing because they're hoping the stock market might be higher. We quickly changed messaging from scarcity to abundance. So we have that program that uh, Danielle just mentioned uh, called Stewardship for All Seasons. It's mainly about annual giving, but it's truly year-round, which isn't asking for money year-round, it's telling stories. This came from someone who sat in their first uh, SAS meeting last week. The best thing that we heard, what was refreshing to us, is to learn that we're not alone. All the new churches, their giving is down or stagnant, and all the churches returning are growing in generosity significantly, and we can't wait to be part of that. So I was asked to come and share some trends that I'm seeing. Here we go. Trend number one, the people who are still with us on this side of the pandemic care deeply about their church, want to see it have a vibrant future, and are willing to be much more generous to see that happen. Trend number two, these same people are willing to do a planned gift through their estate to their church. We have seen a very, very dramatic shift in congregations members' interest and willingness to do just this. It used to be in a feasibility study when we would ask a question about this, we were happy to get 10% of people to respond favorably. We are seeing 50% of people responding favorably to a willingness to include the congregation in a state gift. You should go see Stephanie Burke before you leave today. My mother, who now lives in North Carolina, uh, when I shared with her that there's a new tax law allowing up to $50,000 to go from your IRA to a charitable gift annuity, she said, sign me up. And there's now a planned gift in place to support her uh, church and a camp that we both tend to dearly love. Trend number three, our people are tired of us just asking for stuff all the time. Give to this, come to that, volunteer for this committee. Volunteerism is down across the country, and not just in the church. In fact, I think it's worse outside the church than in the church. What people need is to hear the vibrant ministry that is taking place and the difference that their volunteerism will make, and then to be asked to join that story. I haven't met anybody yet in my life who wakes up in the morning wishing that they could just be busier, and that's what we too often ask people for. And trend number four, the biggest risk in most of our congregations for stewardship is that our top donors are dying or in some cases moving away. We aren't doing enough to mentor and train our mid-level donors to replace them, and we're just not talking about this. Most of the time when I see a church whose giving is declining, it's because one or two donors have died or moved. A congregation I was once part of messaged how, how, how far behind we were in our giving about midway through the year, a year in which Hannah and I grew our generosity by more than we had ever done before. I wondered, why did we bother? Because apparently we're the only ones growing our generosity. Well, it turned out I was wrong. Most of the people in this congregation had, in fact, grown their generosity. But a donor who gave $20,000 a year had passed away that year and we all needed to rally and replace the giving that she could no longer do. Two things for you. If you believe that there's an abundant story to be told and want some help, there's a gift for you from the Synod. My book is available uh, on the Synod table, as well as my favorite blog I've ever written called, Oh My God, We Don't Have Any Money. <laughs> Once again, the trends that we are seeing, the people who are still with us, in our congregations are very generous and are willing to continue to be more generous when stories have shared of how God is at work and our vision for the future of what God can continue to do in our, in our places of ministry. Planned giving is a tremendous opportunity right now.
and it can provide the financial stability that we want and seek in the future if we'll do some work in that area today. People want our churches to do well. They will still volunteer. They will become more engaged. They will join us if instead of being invited into a world of scarcity and busyness, they are invited instead into a world of abundance, of a place that is making an impact for the kingdom of God. And finally, we have to address the fact that our generous donors are dying and moving, and we need to be mentoring and inspiring the next generation of generous stewards in our places. On a quick personal note, I feel I have the greatest call in the world. Through my daily work in generosity and congregations, I am immersed in story after story of what God is up to every day through the ministries of this church, and I get to see the tangible witness to that as people sacrifice and keep those ministries strong with a vision for the future where God will continue to bring abundant life to a world that needs so desperately to know hope and care and love. So who does Jesus say that I am? It is such a joy when part of the answer to that question is a generous steward of all that God has first provided to us. Thank you.